Hey Alpha fam, welcome back to another episode of Alpha Commission. Today on Alpha Commission, of course, we're going to go over the uh, epic green on the uh, charts. And, uh, you know, just like I was suggesting was likely, that selection of altcoins that were just popping off yesterday were, uh, you know, basically giving me the vibes of front-running Bitcoin with the belief that Bitcoin would come along with them, right? And it sort of got kickstarted by uh, XRP, and, uh, you know, we'll, well, we see the result, right? And so, uh, you know, that was great for intuition, but we also had a very clear setup, a uh, set of conditions that needed to be met in order for that pump to happen, and we did meet all of our conditions. So, uh, again, a big congratulations to the Alpha Fam. Uh, you know, we got it. Like, we just are killing it, guys. Like, uh, these calls, I mean, uh, you know, we're not giving the typical kind of guru calls where you just say it's going up tomorrow, it's going down tomorrow, but we're given the conditions that once uh, validated and confirmed, you know, would allow for the trade to go forward. Of course, nothing is 100%, and that makes sense, because uh, if it was, then, uh, you know, you would get your money before the trade was even over, right? Those things would be all already priced in. So there can always be a curveball, and that's why nothing is 100%. But when you have those really good setups, you know, it's just a great feeling to be able to execute them and to uh, to see your hard work pay off. Of course, we do see that the stock market is uh, still very red, and we only have a few uh, of these stocks pumping. And so that is a divergence with crypto that we're going to uh, pay attention to. And we see that uh, globally as well, although uh, China does seem to be uh, popping off. Uh, maybe that's related to, well, they didn't have a transition of power. They had a failure to transition power, right? So that's what happens when these uh, autocratic kind of despotic governments, right, these totalitarians essentially, uh, start having leaders that lock themselves in. Uh, you know, the uh, Chinese president is not supposed to have a third term, but uh, President uh, Xi is basically making himself president for life. And so he's getting confirmed in a third term. And, uh, you know, maybe that's uh, helping China's uh, stocks pump a little bit. But, uh, you know, the rest of the world just looks uh, pretty bleak, guys. Uh, you know, uh, we do have the, uh, you know, federal chairman, uh, Jerome Powell, speaking on digital finance today. And so that could throw a wrench in uh, the bullishness that we're seeing on Bitcoin's chart, depending on what he says, right? So he could say something that really just squashes this whole rally and just uh, makes everything go down the drain. Now, he doesn't have the sort of power over crypto that, uh, you know, the SEC and Congress and some of these other big players uh, have over crypto. But what he says really does carry weight. And, uh, you know, if it catches on with all the Federal Reserves and if the uh, banking system, you know, starts aligning and it's against crypto, then that could be something that's, you know, taken very negatively in the uh, crypto markets. Uh, however, uh, he could just be talking about, uh, you know, uh, national currencies as, uh, you know, digital dollars, basically. And if he talks in that way, then, you know, it could even be beneficial for crypto, which might just take it as, well, crypto is being adopted, even if it's just a, a digital national currency, right? And so, uh, guys, let's go ahead and uh, jump to the charts, because I want to show you why yesterday... Um, I was mentioning that we shouldn't be perma bears, even though, of course, for the last uh, week and uh, more, you know, I've basically been, uh, you know, guiding us on this downturn and, uh, um, you know, being reluctant to get into any trade until we had very precise uh, setups and conditions that were being met. 
But uh, just to kind of give you a visualization, you can see that essentially we're at this support area. We have a drive of bullish divergence on a, a pretty big scale here, right? Uh, this is back in June, right? Now we're in September, almost October. And so that's a huge drive of uh, bullish divergence and so if we can just to keep our support maintain our support in this little blue zone that I have marked out here then of course uh, there is a chance for us to pump even if it's just one of these little kind of reaction rallies one of these little kind of mean reversion rallies you know something that maybe could pump us up to here or maybe up to this 800 on the daily um, you know we could get a nice little rally and crypto could be the uh, beneficiary of that uh, if we jump to the weekly of course you do see that we also have the uh, 200 ema on the weekly providing support this is the uh, us 500 right so um you know, uh, basically uh, NASDAQ. And if we do have uh, support on the 200, traders do like to trade off of the uh, 200 quite often. And so again, that just gives us the possibility for that bounce. And that's why, you know, once we put in that little double bottom, right, this little double bottom here on the uh, weekly, you know, had a nice spring up there above the 200. And after we met some conditions on Bitcoin, that's why I suggested, well, temporarily we can uh, be bullish. But uh, you do see, of course, that we are in just an epic, uh, you know, downtrend. And any type of bounce that we're going to get on stocks, you can see it's going to be a huge fight, okay? This is a year-long trend, right? This is going to be a huge fight to get uh, and break out of, um, you know, the stocks downtrend. So uh, am I confident that crypto can do it? Well, maybe because they dropped faster and harder than uh, stocks did. So maybe they do have a turnaround earlier than stocks. But, uh, you know, this does suggest continuation uh, to the downside or at least a lot of heavy drops, which could maybe make crypto go sideways or be less responsive than some people would like. Um, but uh, I'm just showing you, okay, visually why we should be able to get a little pump here. We also have on the weekly this uh, naked candle, which could get retraced all the way back to that, uh, you know, that, that magical uh, 3800 number. And then, uh, you know, perhaps just uh, rejected there, right? Or uh, maybe even a little bit higher, but probably we get rejected in that area and continue on uh, to the downside uh, in theory, okay? If, if the uh, bearish theory is correct. Uh, let's jump over to, um, well, let's actually go to this uh, NAS 100 chart uh, because I, I want to remind you why uh, these numbers are so important. Uh, let's get rid of these uh, EMAs. And then uh, just to zoom out to kind of see this structure. And I told you there was a little bit of a master key here, right? And the, uh, you know, the breaking down point was somewhere, well, on the uh, on the NAS 100, I think I did it for the S&P 500, but for the NAS 100, it would have been around here in this $12,000 area. We did lose that support, and so we did just fall down. And, uh, you know, we if, if we had been able to get the uh, bullish bounce where we needed it, then we perhaps could have seen some type of path like this on the macro with stocks taking us to perhaps even do a double top and then come back down later to test these areas. I do believe these lows will get tested eventually, either in this drop or if we can work our way out of this and this is just a fake out, then uh, perhaps we do a double top and come back down, uh, which is not uncommon in uh, markets, right? You can see something similar right here, except I would just expect us to come down uh, deeper. Something like this. You see this? Uh, we came down here. We managed to turn around, did a little bit of a double top did a little bit of chop. We even made a new high and then we came back down again, right? Of course, this was COVID, but you can understand what I'm talking about. Something like this. Like if we have a global financial crisis in, uh, in 2023, well, maybe the, uh, you know, the stock market isn't ready to price that in yet. Maybe it needs to price that in in 2023 when they're reevaluating earnings. But uh, and so maybe we don't fall right now. Maybe we do have a recovery and, uh, you know, chop back up here. I mean, that could be an amazing run 
for uh, crypto uh, compared to the stock market. Uh, but um, as it looks like right now, it does look like we're choosing the path to the downside. And so I will remain macro bearish until the stock market flips this around, until we break this downtrend and get up here, or until we recover you know, this type of path to the upside. Um, otherwise, I am wary that we may be entering a capitulation phase after whatever the next bounce is. And by the way, guys, let's zoom in on the daily. And uh, this kind of a bounce was what it was pretty much what I expected. I showed you this um, decision tree basically like a month ago, maybe more actually. And so when we did break down, I suggested we'd probably retouch. We might make a double bottom, which look, we exactly are doing that. And then we would probably get a nice bounce off of that double bottom. And then we would meet resistance if we're going to continue to be bearish. And that's going to bring us to this ultimate capitulation moment, uh, which we might expect in uh, stocks. If we do look at uh, the S&P uh, 500, uh, you can see that channel that I do expect us to break down on. And we would probably just chop our way uh, straight down here if we do just have a global financial uh, crisis where maybe uh, you know banks or real estate or uh, bonds or stocks and crypto and all of these different things if the commodity super cycle right if the equities bubble just like is popping and everything goes down then we're probably going to chop out this channel to the downside sort of like this was very vertical this was very vertical you might have a little bit of a sideways action uh, but you know overall uh, historically speaking, uh, you can get some pretty vertical areas uh, when you're falling down. So, um, you know, especially in this modern era, we seem to be coming back down to this baseline. And to suggest it's not even halfway over may terrify people. But I just want to remind you that we could do something like this, right? And um, again, like, it doesn't have to be a straight line down. OK, so, yes, there's that chance that we get out of this. It's just if we don't, we're probably going to. I mean, you know, if we don't, it'll actually be a blessing because we can kind of scoop up these low prices and then have a V-shaped recovery and you don't have to worry about anything else. OK, but if we do, uh, you know, work our way out of this then we're always going to be under the suspicion that we're going to come back to these lower levels and uh, basically uh, test them out, okay? Um, and this chart wants to do that. So I strongly believe that whatever happens over the next couple years, uh, it's going to be overall bearish. So we're either going sideways for a long, long time, like a very long time, it could be like 10 years sideways, or we're going to chop out these lower levels and make a V-shaped recovery, and then it's up only, right? Because we've basically gotten it all out of our system. And then there's the compromise where we do like, uh, you know, kind of halfway down, maybe make a double top and then come back down, you know, or whatever, and, you know, grind it out for longer than we'd like. But, um you know, at least we did it, right? And so everyone was mentally prepared for what's going to happen. But um, yeah, I mean, that's just a bigger theory of the market and we don't really have to over-focus on that stuff, okay? Just um, play it level by level. And right now we've got that support, right? We've got that support um, on the weekly, on the S&P 500, uh, we've got that... Uh, We've got that uh, 200 uh, EMA that we're sitting on. And pardon me, when we were looking at the uh, US 500, uh, that was the uh, that was the S&P. Pardon me. Uh, for the uh, Nasdaq, uh, we're actually we've actually broken down to the 200 MA, but we're still finding support there, and that still goes along with this kind of like double bottom type concept. Um, for uh, Nasdaq. We are still significantly below and kind of rejecting our momentum zone. So not good, not good. 
Um, we do have quite a bit of work to do. Uh, I would like to see us get over 11,600, okay? On the NAS 100, on the NQ1 exclamation mark. I'd like to see us get over 11,600. We can do that, and then I'm going to be much more bullish. Otherwise, I just think this is a rally that's probably going to fail. But, uh, yeah, we get above 11,600 today. I'm going to think that, yeah, we've recaptured some momentum, not on the weekly, just on the daily. But uh, we could see how that plays out, okay? Uh, for the uh, S&P 500, the uh, ES1 exclamation point, uh, you know, that number is going to be somewhere around 3,770. We get on top of that hold that area, then same thing. I'm going to think, okay, for the day, we've captured our momentum. We've got some positive momentum that could lead us into, you know, some plays, especially on the four hour and all of that. You know, you could you can do your plays because you've got that bullish momentum, right, on the daily, but not the weekly yet. But, you know, we're getting there at least. But right now, we're just super bearish on the, uh, the S&P 500 and we're super bearish on the uh, nasdaq so these things don't look good guys like they could just drop okay like they could pump but they could just as equally drop they're not where they need to be for me to have anything more uh decisive to say about that it just it's an ugly look it's an ugly position uh let's see how spy is opening up uh pre-market is a little bit higher okay so maybe a little bit of a bounce looks like it's going to get us over the uh, weekly 200 so we're underneath that right now but uh, getting above that weekly 200 could provide a little bit of uh you know gusto you know to this market so the uh, spy was under the uh, 200 uh ema but it's going to uh likely pop above and then we have the uh, QQQ, uh, of course, uh, NASDAQ, and it also wants to pop us above, but not above the 200, um, just uh, kind of a mid mid range. But maybe we can ride that momentum up, okay? And so there, this is, these are good levels where if we get a little bit of a pop, it could be a psychological thing that kind of drives prices higher. And so markets are opening a little bit um, warm, which is good. Uh, guys, let's go ahead and jump over to uh, Bitcoin. Of course, uh, for Bitcoin, I was saying, uh, you know, don't, uh, you know, don't be overextending yourself to the upside uh, on those daily uh, plays uh, back here for the last uh, week where we did end up chopping down, right? We just ended up chopping down to the bottom of our range. And so that was truly the correct advice to be giving last week. And by the way, the stock market behaved exactly like what I was suggesting that it would do, and it still looks very ugly. So um, even though Bitcoin got a pump, the stock market did not get something like that. So this is a divergence between uh, crypto and the stock market right now which of course these are different assets, right? And so they're cor highly correlated, but on any one day, any one week, they could be out of sync. And so, uh, you know, they haven't decoupled guys, but yes, there are some moves that can go on in one or the other class of assets uh, while, you know, the other is doing something else, right? And so uh, guys, like, look, uh, you know, we had the uh, perfect setup here uh, on the uh, weekend, which I suggested, you know, uh, that we shouldn't be over bearish, even though we had this climb down on Monday morning before the markets opened up. And that's the most important thing. Before the markets opened up, I did suggest the levels that we would need to conquer in order to see this uh, bullish movement play out. And uh, sure enough, uh, we got it. Uh, we got that uh, play to the upside. We met my conditions of, uh, let's see here, of getting above uh, 18,000, 
you know, what was it? Uh, I actually flipped this thing around because I updated it. Anyway, we had to get over a certain level, and then we had to get over the neckline, and we defeated both. We got the uh, we got the first Mario block that we hopped on, and then we uh, stat on the uh, neck here, and then, of course, we got on top of the uh, second block, uh, which would suggest continuation to the upside. So, you guys, uh, basically, the conditions that I set for bullishness were met, and that, uh, you know, uh, completed uh, or actualized by the closing of the daily candle. So I'll show you the, the daily candle here, right, where we met the condition for bullishness for this candle right here. And that immediately allowed the next candle to start uh, pumping because it gave permission to the next candle to continue going. Uh, when we met my daily conditions. And so here you have that inverted head and shoulders kind of look, this uh, broadening descending wedge. We met my condition for the number that we had to meet in order to capture our momentum zone, which these are updated, so that's not reflected from uh, uh, pre-market Monday morning, but it's actually uh, today's, right? Actually right now's uh, levels. And so you can see that we're still well ahead of our momentum zone, so we're cool on the day. Like we're actually pushing into some possible uh, bullishness on the weekly uh, by capturing that weekly four. That's just kind of like the teaser level, right? The uh, weekly four is just a teaser. It doesn't mean anything really, but uh, if you can grab that weekly four, uh, it's kind of like you're tickling the uh, the weekly to uh, consider getting a little bit bullish. You really need to uh, grab the uh, weekly nine in order to uh, you know have anything meaningful going on. But um, being in this area is actually a very good sign, and so we are doing what we need to do. Uh, the uh, the two day. Uh, is actually going to close today. I haven't uh, adjusted this one. Still, we need to hang on to that level, which I suggested almost two days ago of 19,700. If we can hang on to that level, then of course we are going to satisfy these conditions for continuation for the next couple days, right? And uh, I believe that we also have some things going on on the uh, five day, which would be confluent with that. So yeah, I mean, uh, 19,500 ish is kind of uh, where we would need to be. Um, let me just uh, check out some of these things. Uh, yeah. So basically, yep. I mean, the five day also is in agreement with the two day and let's see, the five day also closes in 12 hours. And the two-day closes in two hours. So we have some pretty good signs here. Let's see, when does the weekly close? The weekly closes in five days. So that five-day signal is going to be the better signal to be using at this moment. And I learned that uh, trick from uh, Crown uh, Crypto, uh, Crown's Crypto Cave. And so, uh, guys, like uh, when you're looking at these type of uh, momentum drives and, uh, you know, basically... Uh, pushes to the upside that could possibly have some relevance, uh, you know, to the higher time frames. Then you might want to double check the uh, five-day, not just the weekly, um, because they do have uh, significantly different closings, and yet uh, the implications are still pretty good on the five-day, right? So, uh, and also, uh, you know, our professional exchanges jumping over to CME here operate on five days, right? Because they're closed on the weekends. And so that can give you a little bit uh, more interesting reading. Uh, let's go ahead and jump down to the uh, four hour just so that we can see our structure here that we had on the uh, CME professional chart. Really janky, really kind of mutilated, kind of Jerome Powell distorted, quadruple witching distorted, kind of inverted head and shoulders. But uh, overall, if it hadn't been for that crazy volatility, it would have been a, a pretty uh, pretty nice uh, inverted head and shoulders. And so I did suggest that was a likely play. You can see my bar right here. And uh, we are playing out that move. I mean, we, we essentially got the uh, measured move there almost to a T uh, because this neckline, I do have it a little bit high. And so this should play out. Yep. 
Yep, we've pretty much uh, maxed out this inverted head and shoulders. So again, guys, like uh, congratulations to the uh, Alpha Fam. I mean, uh, you know, we just, uh, you know, we're just killing it, guys. So uh, great job if you took any of those plays. And of course, we did have the validation that we would have to break above that neckline, right? Which you could draw that imaginary trend uh, between the wicks, which is why I had this higher, right? So that we just included the wicks. Just a little bit of extra confirmation. And, uh, you know, we could use the uh, candle bodies, but just for that type of a breakout, I'd rather use the uh, wicks just to confirm that we're, you know, we're not just like faking out because we've obviously wicked to that area several times and then pushed back down. So I just don't want it to be just a wick there. I want it to be a real candle movement right above that area. And so, uh, yes, uh, basically we did uh, get that breakout, but more importantly, we closed, right? We closed several four-hour candles above that uh, momentum zone that I required us to, uh, to uh, meet there. And so we did uh, be able to capture that thrust to the upside. Now, uh, you know, the key point here is going to be uh, back on the 24-7 uh, exchange, which is that we have to maintain this um, this second block, right? This two-day, this five-day kind of uh, limitation here. So anywhere between 19,500 and uh, 19,700, I would say that uh, this red zone here, like this breakdown zone, like we now have to kind of move it up there, right? You understand what I'm saying? So if we lose this area, right? We're up here right now, so we're... Like if we close above this this the uh, the uh, top of this white box, then we're gonna be just golden, okay? Like nineteen thousand eight hundred, we're gonna be golden, right? Let me double check on the uh, two day. Yeah, I mean it's it's nineteen thousand seven hundred actually. So let's go back to the four hour. Can just adjust this down a little bit. Uh, yeah. Oh, well, my bottom line had it. Okay, so that's good. Okay, we'll just use the bottom line. Yeah, nineteen thousand seven hundred. So if we lose the uh, bottom of that white box, then uh, of course, uh, most likely we're going to go to the downside, especially if we lose uh, nineteen thousand five hundred. Then. It's probably just, I mean, you can almost see it, right? Like if that happened, you could see that would be a clear rejection down and we'd probably go back to testing our lows or even a worse fate, even lower, okay? And uh, by the way, that is highly possible. Um, this pattern that Bitcoin kind of has, you can kind of see like one push up to that line, a second push up and then like die, right? Uh, one push up, right? A second push up and then die. One push up, a second push up and then die, right? One push up, a second push up and then die. One push up, uh oh, we don't have the second push up. Could this be the second push up before we just kill over and die? That's the risk. That's why I'm giving you these conditions, right? So, you know, 19,700, 19,500. We lose that, and it's not going to be good, okay? That means a daily closure below those numbers, right? Or within that number or below. And then if we get above 19,700, we're probably gravy, guys. Like, we're, we're probably good, pretty good. Uh, if you closed above 19,500, it'd be kind of a gray area between 19,700 and 19,500. Just because we would have that higher time frame pressure, uh, continuing to push us down, okay? So that would be a little bit of the difference between the two-day and the five-day. And so that's why these are kind of zones, right? But either way, you're, you, you'd you see we'd be retracing pretty significantly. And uh, on the uh, white box, we could get a nice bounce. Under the, red uh, the, under the red box, we're probably just continuing to fall uh, according to our momentum. Now, we could uh, potentially catch ourselves in this zone down here right but you know what are we going to do you know 
what are we going to do there? We're going to have to ask the question all over again. We're going to have to start this whole thing over again, okay? So, I mean, that could happen. It's just we're getting, you know, a, a, a sizable rejection off of a long-term rejection zone, right? It, it'd probably take a lot of work. It'd take a lot of work to try to do it again, okay? So, you know, we want to hold that level. That's what I'm trying to impart on you guys. Uh, Ethereum, let's jump over to Ethereum. Uh, we do have that uh, inverted head and shoulders, that uh, broadening descending wedge, which is playing out. And um, like Bitcoin, Ethereum held the zone that it needed to hold in order to have that confirmation for the possibility of bullishness to the upside and that uh, really nice play. And so just like Bitcoin, I think we got a, a nice 6% uh, pump, 5 to 6% pump, uh, pretty good. Uh, the uh, momentum zones on most of these assets have moved down a little bit. And so we do only need to hold this level, sort of like Bitcoin. We just need to hold this level to be able to have a second shot. But uh, really... Um, Really, we need to just, you know, hold the top of this at 1340. Uh, we don't really want to violate that. It could suggest uh, more downside to come. Okay, so 1340 is really that that number. Since Ethereum also has a two-day closing, uh, but it's pretty much in the same area, so just call it 1330. Yeah, yeah, 1330. We have a little bit of wiggle room, of course, because of that momentum zone. But just for a solid platform to bounce off of, you know, 1330 is what we want to hold. And then we have everything still pointed to the upside. Uh, looking at Ethereum. Oh, and by the way, Ethereum has a, a pretty good ways to go, right? So... Um, Whereas Bitcoin looks like it's kind of approaching this area very quickly and could get some heavy resistance right here, Ethereum looks like it has a bit of a ways to go before, I mean, of course you could, you know, you could be looking at these wicks and this, you know, these candles over here, but for its measured move, it, it hasn't played out as much as Bitcoin's measured move has played out. That's what I'm trying to say. And so there is more room potentially for ethereum to go and so you know we can also perhaps think that if bitcoin does hit some resistance maybe bitcoin dominance would go down a little bit and then maybe ethereum would pump a little bit harder so just to keep your eye on ethereum um, if this move does play out and any coins that you know that are uh, heavily associated with uh, moving when ethereum moves um, it could be uh, interesting. Let's look at Ethereum dominance. Yeah, you see Ethereum's dominance is pumping right now. And um, let's see Bitcoin dominance. Oh, Bitcoin's dominance uh, skyrocketed, right? So this is very bullish. Um, let's look at BTC ETH. And yeah, so... I don't know. It's kind of it's kind of even right now. They both pumped five to six percent, but uh, depending on which way this uh, Bitcoin versus ETH chart pumps, then you know maybe ETH is going to have a nice day or Bitcoin is going to have a nice day. But you can keep a watch of those things, and uh, depending on uh, how you trade, you might want to pick one over the other, right? So just what I'm trying to say is that something looks like uh, like ETH has a little bit more of a range to go. And we also never really fulfilled uh, the measured move for this falling wedge on ETH. So that suggests to me that there still is this kind of target out here at around 2000 bucks, you know, 1900 bucks for Ethereum. And if we do have continuation of bullishness on the charts, I would just expect Ethereum to make a move for that level. So maybe it won't happen, but that's still up in the air. This is 
this is a breakdown, but that didn't invalidate the target here. Not yet. I mean, it looks pretty bad, but not yet, right? So uh, let's go ahead and go over to Ethereum's uh, CME. And we can see that uh, basically the same thing, guys. Basically the same thing as Ethereum. Nothing too novel going on here. I don't see any CME gaps or anything. So maybe a little bit of a retracement. We don't really want to lose this zone right here. So let's see. Thirteen hundred, thirteen sixty five, thirteen thirty six, thirteen sixty five. Yep, so we want to be solidly on top of this, um, on top of this bar. Let's go back to the four hour. If we do pull back, we really just want to be inside of this teal bar or on top of it, you know. And that could imply continuation. Uh, all of our momentum would still be directed to the upside uh, for the day. And so that would be uh, just a bullish retracement. If we break under there, uh, we start to lose things. We start to lose some structure. And then we could lose the MACD next. And then we could lose the Stokes. So bottom line, 1300 and just best case situation, we hold above 1365. So it depends upon your risk tolerance, right, guys? Uh, let's go ahead and uh, double check the uh, VIX. VIX, like I mentioned, there was a good chance that we just had a little bit of a fake out to the upside up here and that it could chop down. That could be giving us that nice trading because it kind of got rejected out of that not good for trading zone. Of course, I've been teaching you guys this stuff. You guys can check it whenever you'd like. If the VIX is coming down, then it's probably going to be an easier trading day or trading session, at least for the four hours or something. And if it's popping up, then it's probably going to be worse for you. But the uh, big daddy right now is, of course, the uh, DXY. And so no matter what the VIX is doing, if the DXY is making a move, then the rest of the charts are probably going to fall in line with that. And of course, I do have this heavy resistant area that I've had marked out for a pretty much weeks. And oh my God, like, can trading view make this chart any worse? Like every time I open it up, these lines are pointed in a different direction. Like they're always crossing in the right area, but they're always like moving in a different direction. It's weird. But uh, anyway, uh, let's go to the daily, see if it straightens out a bit. Okay. Let's go to log. That's better. And uh, guys, yeah, so you see that we had this diagonal. Uh, we had this uh, yellow diagonal right here. Uh, we have this horizontal, which is blue, uh, which actually uh, traces way back there. And then, of course, uh, we have this uh, growth curve, right, which is also acting as a limitation point. And so all of these resistances are crossing over at the exact same point where I have my uh, arrow here. And so if we did get some pullback, um, that would be great. That would be great for trading. And so I'm looking forward to some type of a pullback. Now, the problem is that the... Uh, the UK is making pretty bad decisions related to uh, the British pound. And so the dollar may just end up staying bullish or even pushing higher if the British pound has another drop. And most analysts that I know are considering that the British pound is likely to have another drop. And so that could take us into even higher territory. But... Um, just on the face of it, we all ha we have these drives of bearish divergence, just everything going in favor of a pullback, which would be great for trading. And so we have these naked candles. We have all of this stuff that suggests that a pullback is necessary. 
and yet the dollar just remains up there. So, you know, it's really this is the deciding factor in the market. Can the UK get its stuff together? Can Japan get its stuff together? Can the euro get its stuff together? You know, these different baskets of currencies, they have to show their strength. Their governments have to show their strength. And um, otherwise, the dollar is just going to continue to press up. And there is room to press up if it wants to, okay? So that's the biggest concern. I don't see a pullback on the dollar. And so if we do have the uh, British pound, for example, just falling down, a, a one more drive down, that could pull the whole market down with it because the dollar could suddenly spike up and just everything could go down, and that could make that a fake out on Bitcoin, right? Let's see, USDT dominance. Just let me get out of the log. Just doing what I suggested, just grinding this kind of wedge here. Uh, you know, we had this pullback from pretty much the top to the bottom here. And so that did uh, give us a good day of trading as people went back into assets. And uh, so that's just really representative of it. It's not really predictive of it, but it's representative of it. And, uh, you know, if we broke down here, then that would show us that there's more confidence in the market. If we break above this red line again, then that's going to just tell us that it's, the market's feeling very weak. As of now, it's just grinding this area out. It's just... You know, we just have to wait. Probably waiting for the dollar, waiting for the VIX. The big story coming up is going to be the dollar and the VIX. If the VIX can cool down and that the dollar can cool down, then we're going to have a nice little run. If the dollar goes and the VIX continues running hot, then we're probably going to have another capitulation down. Okay? So that's the bottom line. I can't tell you anything better than that for the macro but on the daily i've shown you the conditions for stocks and for bitcoin and for uh, ethereum as for our altcoins not really going to go over that just going to say that a crv did pretty well out of our selection that was a nice bounce of course we were following that breakout of crv and that higher low structure and so that was just a nice uh, double bottom with a huge 10% pump off of a CRV. So, you know, I mentioned whatever way Bitcoin went, the altcoins were going to go. And you could position, position yourself in almost any of them, and they all went off. ADA was just kind of a lagger, right? Just kind of pathetic movement. But even that got about 5%. Kadena, 5%. Basically just ADA at this point. Zill, 5%. Flux, 5%. You see they're all doing the same as Ethereum and Bitcoin, or a little bit less, like because they're just following it. And then XRP. Uh, I can't really count XRP. It had a major pump, so just ignore XRP. Just pulling back. But uh, CRV outperformed, okay, guys? Like, CRV did double what Bitcoin or Ethereum did. And so that's interesting, right? That's interesting. It looks pretty bullish. All right, guys, I'm going to end there. So uh, a little bit tired today. It's a little bit early here in California, but I did want to get the market open. Let's see how stocks are doing. In this uh, pre-market, yeah, the pre-market trades are suggesting a significantly higher. Uh, there is a gap here on the uh, four-hour on the S&P 500. Let's see the QQQ. What's this arrow? Just get rid of that. QQQ doesn't have a gap. Well, a little thin one up here, but it is trading significantly higher. It's a thin spot, and so. Uh, SPY looks like it's going to drag us up to potentially fill that gap, and that could be a nice trade, okay, guys? Um, but does it fill the gap and then it comes back down? That's the question, okay? So filling the gap could pump crypto, though. It just You're going to want to take your profits in case this thing gaps up and then falls back down, okay? 
no guarantee of continuation on this. Uh, da, da, da. All right, guys. Yeah, I'm exhausted, man. So uh, uh, that's your alpha for the day. Stay safe and happy trading.